Hey, this is Silas. I'm about to go to a basketball tournament, actually called the Basketball Tournament, and uh, I'm going to just use this as an example to discuss kind of group loyalties that people have in different situations that you may not really realize how much they play a big part in your life. One example is this tournament I'm going to. Uh, one of my friends actually coaches in it. He's uh, following him on social media, played football with him. He was a year behind me, or a year or two behind me, I think two years behind me. But yeah, I've been following him on social media, so I'm on there that he was in New York, saw that he's in this basketball tournament, so I decided let me go check it out. And the other story I'm going to discuss is another friend that I graduated, okay, she wasn't a friend, I knew her, she it was my graduating class. And she was, I saw a video last night of her saying that the Russia thing, the Russia investigation into President Donald J. Trump in the United States, maybe more of an issue to Trump supporters because of, uh, she said something about the names being difficult, even one of the prosecutors had said one of the problems with this case is that things are coming out in a slow and slow basis, so people might not connect the dots. And in a normal case, I might have just jumped to this person and been like, no, that's what I normally say about other people who are not really Trump supporters or anything. But having her say that and then thinking, okay, I went to school with this person, there was a bit of me that kind of paused and I was thinking, okay, was she misquoted in this? But links in the low bar to both the tournament and the, um, and the news article, but let me get into the video now. The train's coming, so I'll get to that later. Yeah, so still on the commute. Um, so, different things happening for different reasons. In both these stories with both these people, I haven't talked to them personally for a long time. One of them I definitely talked to more as we played in the same football team. And the other one, even though they were in my grade, we didn't talk near as much for different reasons. But now with her video talking about how complicated the Russia issue might be, which is why Trump supporters are not really supportive of it, for me, part of the complication with that issue is I'm also wondering, as in the video I released about how garbage matters to all garbage men, all garbage matters to all garbage men, is like, with the Russia thing, what is the point of this? You look through somebody's garbage, it may look complicated. Like, if I just went through that garbage can right there, if I poured out that garbage can out there on the ground, it may look complicated. But that doesn't mean that just because it's complicated, I'm like, okay, what does that have to do with this station? means that all of a sudden that trash in that garbage can is worthwhile. So the complication might be a reason for Trump fans to say this Russia thing is a nothing burger, as Van Jones said, or the complications could be the same reason why people are saying, oh, there's actually something there, you know? So if it was clearer, I mean, if something clear had happened, either way, that's what I think both sides are looking for. Both sides are looking for something clear to say this is what he did, and both sides are looking for something to say that this is not something that happened. Now at the same point, if you're trying to prove somebody did something, it's up to you to prove it, to prove it with the evidence. So I think the burden of proof is on the people who say there was a connection and there was an issue. I'm not sure how well this is going to be born. If there's a Brooklyn Bridge. If it's a Brooklyn Bridge, yeah, it's a Brooklyn Bridge. Heading out to Brooklyn. Now, different things happen for different reasons again. We're both going to be here at this tournament. My friend is going to be there coaching, that's why he's here in New York. I'm here for work, I'm living here. And I'm going because I saw this on social media. So, we're just having a talk with some friends about how um, social media may not be. It'd be counterproductive, we're not that useful, but it's just a tool. It's just something we use. The information that's spread there is just information. The Russian information is just information. The information about this basketball game is just information. This mixed games, all kinds of other basketball games that I don't want to attend. But for some reasons in my personal life, I choose to go attend this tournament. I could have sat at home and watched this tournament. Uh, I remember asking my friend if there were tickets, but I decided, okay, let me just check myself, get a link to the website for this location on the uh, post that posted. So I decided to uh, actually make the trip up. So that's the thing information is just information. People may have. 
information is just information, but the personal choices that you have are the ones that adjust how you react to situation. So whether it's the Russia investigation, whether it's going to attend sports, supporting sports teams, whether it's me deciding to take two trains to get to this location instead of just walking and taking the queue, pick the six, switch to the queue. You know, whether it was me deciding to actually go in and find out more information about coming to this game and everything. So there's a whole bunch of things, you know, like my friend could have had the time to actually see and respond to the message, but he didn't, and I'm still coming. So there's just a whole bunch of different things to consider when you're just talking about the information. Where does that actual choice come in? Okay, out in Brooklyn now. At the place, I think it's this building right here. Gotta get around to the back. But yeah, just back to the information. We get in information, and then what we do with that information is. I don't, I don't want to say what makes it important, but that's key. What does that information do to you? And then there was this story I saw, this horrific story about some kids recording somebody drowning and you think where is the responsibility when does a child get responsibility when do you say okay these kids recorded this person recording i think they were in their teens they should be held criminally responsible okay it wasn't against the law what they did and this is another key thing with this trump thing the information coming out is it against the law what he did is it against the law because he did this when he was a private citizen which other politicians can you say haven't done the similar things that you're going to uncover in Trump's history? That case has to be made, even if it's difficult or instant information. But anyway, back to the situation. When does somebody get held responsible for their behavior, for their actions? When does that begin? Now, with these kids, are they responsible for letting this person drown? Legally, by the law, no, they're not responsible. You don't, you're not compelled by the law in this case to risk your life to save somebody else's life or not record their death. That's not against the law if you had nothing to do with initiating that death. But what I'm trying to focus in with the kids thing is right now with this situation with my friend who I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go watch this in large part due to the fact that we played football together. Now playing football together that created a bond with us that is making me react to the information of seeing him at coaching and having a basketball game to decide, let me take some time out of my day and come out here and support him. That definitely wouldn't have happened if it was just some random guy that I was following on Instagram for some reason. Now, with the person, the reporter, who said the thing about the information, I think having the fact that I went to school together with her, having that alumni type thing, gave me a little pause. The reason I even clicked on the story was like, oh, I saw that person. I was reading this different story about, I think, Kamala Harris running, which is a senator, I think, from California or something. But anyway, um, she was thinking of running for president in 2020, and I kind of think she should. But anyway, so I saw this article. I saw her photo. I was like, okay, let me click this. And then the information thing, I'd heard people on the more Trump supporter side say, look, maybe some of the reason that people don't support Trump is they just have the wrong information. And she was making the case that part of the reason that people don't understand how bad Trump is, I think that's the, what she was insinuating, was part of the fact that they don't really understand the information that's out there. So you'll see with the different articles I link here, you can check the comment sections. There was articles on different sites that essentially just posted verbatim what she said and didn't give too much commentary. Then you go to the comment section and you see the different reactions of those people in there. Why are these reactions different? I think it's because these people have teams. They just go out there, just like I'm going to go to this basketball game. I'm going to be supporting the team my friend is coaching, of course. The game's going to be the same, same rules. The same points are going to be scored. But because <clears throat> I'm supporting my friend's team, if they score, it will make me happier. It will. That information, that point of them scoring is going to be different than the other team scoring. Now, if somebody's there to support their friend, they're going to have a negative reaction to the same thing that gives me a positive reaction. 
and part of why this is going to happen is something that happened when I was a child. I was in my teens. The connection that brought me to support my friend here. Now, when it comes to politics, how much of politics is based on teams, based on connections that you made when you were a kid? How much of what people are reacting to in this Russia thing, in this story that New York Times, I mean, the reporter posted, when she says this Russia information might be too complicated saying the names, how much of that is based off of biases that we have that were established when we were kids? Now, if you had those biases established when you were a kid, how responsible are you for not changing that, for affecting you? Now, you take those biases and these people vote in these biases and make world, world changing decisions, not just in their reality tunnel, but that affect other people's reality tunnel. So, just some thoughts on that. Hope you can um, get something out of these thoughts and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Links in the low bar. Until next video. Bye.